tonight, how hackers intercept text messages and phone calls, how simple the Sony hack actually was, and a security flaw in millions of routers. Tech News Tonight is next. This, this is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 238 for Thursday, December 18th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. German researchers have reported at a hacker conference in Hamburg, Germany, that flaws have contributed to widespread insecurity on SS7. That is the global network that allows the world's cellular carriers to route calls and texts and other services. Turns out that SS7, which was first designed in the 1980s, has serious vulnerabilities that allow hackers to listen to private phone calls and intercept text messages on a massive scale, even when cellular networks are using the most advanced encryption. The researchers did not find evidence that what they've discovered has been picked up by any sort of government on a widespread basis, but that doesn't mean that the National Security Agency or Britain's GCHQ, for example, aren't already exploiting this. But it doesn't mean they are either. Let's check in with Sony's no good, very, very bad hack. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that investigators suspect that the attack was carried out by Unit 121 of North Korea's General Bureau of Reconnaissance, which is its most elite hacking unit. Described that way anyway. Analysis by researchers at Cisco of a malware sample matching the MD5 hash signature of the Destover malware, that's what it's called, that was used in the attack on Sony Pictures shows that the hack was actually not very sophisticated at all. What's still unclear is how the malware got into Sony Pictures network in the first place and how many terabytes of data from corporate systems could have been funneled out of the network within a few days of the attack. Now, according to reports in South Korea, North Korea has been building the third largest, world's third largest, military cyber warfare unit in the entire world with over 3,000 troops. Mismanaged IT, IT rather support from corporate parent Sony Corporation of America and poor support team training made the problems worse, according to emails leaked out of Sony pictures. You know what also isn't going well? Your router, potentially your router anyway. Uh, we've got some uh, some routers that are quite vulnerable, it turns out. And to, uh, to joining us to talk more about what's going on is Michael Mimoso, editor at ThreatPost.com. Hello, Michael. Welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. All right, so let's talk about this. You've got an article up today on ThreatPost that says 12 million home routers are vulnerable to takeover. Well, that sounds like a big number. What's going on? It is a big number, and apparently there's a problem with an embedded web server uh, inside some popular routers. A lot of big manufacturers uh, run this web server, and there's an issue where it's vulnerable to take over by hackers remotely. Um, they can watch your traffic. They can sniff your passwords. Um, just watch your internet traffic as it leaves and, and comes uh, into your router. So it's, it's bad. The, the scale is pretty big. So for anybody who's sort of like, I know I have a router, I don't know, it's, you know, in my closet somewhere, I don't even really right. know what brand it is. I mean, who's affected? Who should be worried? Um, it's a lot of commercial routers that are provided by ISPs, uh, they're manufactured by D-Link, Huawei. Um, there's a link in the article that I wrote today to the complete list, uh, and it's pretty comprehensive. I think there are like 200 products from probably about a dozen or so vendors. So it, it's it's a pretty big uh, list of routers that are affected. And the problem is that eventually we'll get patches for this, but will those patches get pushed through um, automatically or are consumers going to go out, have to go out and get them? I mean, how often have you updated your router at your house? Um, I, I guess probably not very often. I know I haven't. So um, the problem with these vulnerabilities that they, is that they exist indefinitely a lot of times. Now the the the, uh, the 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 vulnerability has kind of a cool name, misfortune cookie. Ha ha. Right. Do we know of anybody who has exploited this? Or you know, besides being at risk, uh, is there you know any evidence that uh, some bad things have been happening because of this vulnerability? 
Right. When I, I talked to um, a researcher at Checkpoint Security who uh, wrote the report about this vulnerability today, and they said they're not aware of it. But then in the next breath, they said that this vulnerability has been around since 2002. Um, so chances are, if these guys found it, that some bad guys have found it and they're looking into it as well. Um, the guy at Checkpoint that I talked to, he did tell me that um, they were looking back into some of the big router hacks that had happened in the last year or so, looking for some connections and some clues that uh, that might link the two. So nothing conclusive yet, but chances are that um, somebody's found it and looked at it. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, this is over 10 years old. What right. is it with these vulnerabilities, at least in 2014, that, you know, end up getting discovered and possibly exploited that have just been around for so long? Yeah, I mean, with this stuff, I mean, this is kind of just set it and forget it kind of software, especially with routers. Um, ISPs distribute a lot of them to to residential areas, and they just sit there, and nobody updates them, nobody patches them, nobody really looks at the code unless you're a researcher or a hacker type. And um, you know, then we're hearing about the vulnerability once it's found. I mean, somebody's going to find it, somebody's going to look for it, and hopefully patch it before it's exploited. It's not Michael an unusual Lozo. circumstance. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just saying it's not an unusual circumstance. Well, uh, thank you for telling us a little bit more about this vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, again, as you mentioned in your article, you've got a list of people that might be affected or types of routers that might be affected. So we definitely uh, encourage you to check out threatpost.com and you know just get a little bit of a sense of whether or not you need to worry. Michael Momoso is the editor at threatpost.com. And before we let you go, Michael, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Uh, we write every day about all kinds of security issues at threatpost.com. Uh, the site's updated a few times a day and definitely invite you to check it out. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Thank you. Coming up on the show, Amazon rolls out one hour delivery and the app Secret relaunches with chat. But first, let's thank, we love them, ZipRecruiter.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Are you hiring for your business? Are you growing? If so, congratulations. But how do you find the best candidate to fill the role that you want to fill? Posting your job in one place is, you know, it's the first first step, but you want to post your job in a bunch of places and find the best candidates, right? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to over 50 job sites. That includes Craigslist and LinkedIn and Twitter, but it's just one click. You don't have to do any work at all. You can find candidates in any city or industry all over the U.S. Just post once and watch those candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. Don't have to juggle emails. Don't have to worry about a bunch of people calling your office and interrupting your busy day. You can screen candidates quickly, you rate them, and then you can hire the right person as fast as possible. If you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter helps you find a new employer as much as it helps a new employer find you, you can have the newest job posting sent to your inbox every day. And this is great for employers as potential candidates learn about your new postings quickly and you get motivated candidates that way. Would you like to find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses? I think you do. Right now, viewers and listeners to TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And we thank ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Oh, there are always more. Prime Now is Amazon's new one-hour delivery service, and it's up and running, at least in certain parts of Manhattan, New York. Though an Amazon representative tells Engadget that more service areas are coming soon. So customers must be subscribers to Amazon's Prime service, which is $99 per year, which puts Amazon right on par with Seamless, Postmates, even Uber, by offering courier services. Now, let's see how a national rollout looks based on success in New York. I think it's the Chelsea area that they're covering. Remember when anonymous app Secret launched? It was back in February, too much fanfare. Oh, very controversial. Seems kind of like forever ago. The app was very popular that was downloaded more than 15 million times in just 10 months. Today, though, Secret isn't even among the top 1,500 apps. That's according to App Annie, which me measures app store numbers. So, 
Going forward, the company has launched Secret 2.0 for iPhone and Android, which is a text-based version of the service, more text-based anyway, that puts more emphasis on chat as well. So Secret now enables private one-on-one -on -one messaging between users. Tapping on a user's avatar will now let users contact the author of a post directly. And Secret is also changing how users share with at least two different feeds, Secrets from Friends and Secrets from Cities, or schools. The company has also hired executives from Facebook to lead privacy efforts and prevent users from naming individuals in posts, which has been a problem for the company in the past. Everyone's favorite ride sharing service or startup bully, depending on who you ask, Uber, has applied for a US patent last year for dynamically adjusting prices for service using mobile devices. In other words, Uber wants to patent the idea of surge pricing. The system measures supply, what that's Uber's drivers, and then demand, which is passengers like you and me, and prices based on that data. 10 former applications for patents have already been rejected by the US Patent and Trademark Office for obviousness or for covering something not eligible for protection. The previous patent applications, the first which dates back to 2009, include determining the most likely travel path of a vehicle, providing on-demand services through portable computing uh, devices, and providing a receipt on a portable device. Finally, remember Cardboard? You know, it was Google's virtual reality kind of side project that was first launched at Google I.O. earlier this year, in the summer anyway, has announced new SDKs and a section of the Google Play App Store specifically for cardboard compatible apps. Now, earlier this week, Google shared its cache of Street View images on Cardboard through the Google Maps app via Google+, Plus, though the feature is currently only available for Android devices through the Google Maps app. The official Cardboard project has supported Street View locations since it launched, some of them anyway, and Street View does work on Oculus Rift. So next time you want to plan a little vacation somewhere fancy or far away, you can just put on your Google Cardboard and take a stroll. And that does it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, or feedback. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.